Hello, this is Jonathan, aka the smartest moron of Operation Rainfall. With Senran Kagura Peach Beach Splash now out in Japan, and a release date set for North America and Europe, I figured now would be a good time to see what everyone's favorite Senran Kagura characters were in Operation Rainfall. The poll was limited to characters only seen within the games, though, so New Wave characters will not be featured here. If you wish to see my own personal Top 10 characters, or perhaps even my reviews or analysis of Homura, you can check them out on my channel at The Smartest Moron. In addition to this list, we will also be holding a contest. The winner will receive a Steam key for Senran Kakura Estival Versus, which has been provided to us by Xseed. In order to enter, all you must do is like and comment on the video, while also subscribing to our channel. Act fast though, for you only have one week until the contest ends. Also be warned that this video contains massive spoilers for the following. Senran Kagura Burst, Shinobi vs, Estival vs, the Senran Kagura manga called Spark, and Deep Crimson. If you have yet to play any of the games or read the manga, I highly suggest you do so. Without further ado, here are Operation Rainfall's Top 10 Senran Kagura Characters. Number 10, Katsuragi. Katsuragi has certainly earned a lot of popularity and was nearly the protagonist of the Hanzo team, at least until the creators thought she was too similar to Hakupu Sansaku of Iki Sen and replaced her with Asuka. She was even popular enough to be one of the finalists in Operation Rainfall's Hottest Girl Awards, though she lost to Aranea of Final Fantasy XV. Despite some losses there, she has plenty of reasons to help make her a likable character. Her fighting style is definitely one of them, being able to control fierce winds by using her feet and her weapons. This kicking style does lead to a lot of panty shots, though Katsuragi is hardly shy about showing off her body, as we also see with her open shirt. And despite Asuka being the leader of the team, even she admits that Katsuragi is still one of the most powerful shinobi they have. One of the reasons her personality works, as Benny Cuppers and his view on the character, is that there is more to her character besides groping boobs. One of the most important plot lines involves her parents, who abandoned her to make sure she could live a happy life as they were renegade shinobi. She has to struggle with actually killing someone so her folks can live in peace, or doing the right thing, which usually involves letting a character live and disobey the orders of a good shinobi. It's done fairly well in both Deep Crimson and Shinobi Verses, as we see her trying to do the deed, but unable to, and going back to doing her own thing kick whoever she wants in the butt. This is especially important since she was still a high schooler, and hasn't really been taught a strict killing policy like some in Hibijo. My favorite part about her character though is actually not part of the games, rather it's in the manga side story Spark. The manga covers her trying to get to Ikaraga to accept her not just as a rival, but as a friend as well. And not even just her, but Asuka as well who later joins them. However, with the pressure coming from her family, Ikaruga keeps backpedaling on the idea, and tries to maintain her cold attitude. Yet it's Katsuragi in the end who helps change Ikaruka into a far more caring person without just constantly groping her chest, though she still tries to do that as we see throughout the games. One interesting thing to note is that she doesn't seem to like other girls doing the same thing to her, like with Ayame, or even in the one anime episode when Ikaruka tries to grope her for a change. On the other hand, Katsuragi is not a particularly deep character. Some fans even argue that the writers are pursuing her love of boobs over her love of fighting. And with Estabal Verses, it's hard not to see that. Even so, she remains a fun character to play as, and brings much needed lighthearted antics when the story gets a bit too dark. It also helps that when someone thinks of Senran Kagura, Katsuragi is almost guaranteed to be one of the characters they will think of. <laughs> Number 9, Murasaki. In contrast to Katsuragi, Murasaki arguably has the most depressing personality. She didn't even want to be a ninja, but her family forced her, trying to bring out the power called the Root of Calamity. Basically, it harnesses negative emotions and turns them into a very dangerous weapon. She accidentally injured her sister, Emu, and when her family congratulated her, Murasaki became more of a shut-in than ever, threatening to use the power against anyone who dared try to get her out of her room in Hibijo. It says something when someone like Suzune can't get her to come out. Someone who forces her students to stay underwater for days at a time. Fortunately, her sister and the rest of the new Habijo gang do get along. Although that took quite some time, and a messy affair involving being shot at one point. It's a long story. Part of the reason I ranked her so high on my list is because this is a character that I could actually relate to. So understanding her problems was actually pretty simple. Granted, I don't go around sniffing people. However, the main reason I like her so much is because she has shown some surprising development. Her Shinobi Heart mission in Shinobi Versus was the most depressing of all revealing just how much negativity she carries naturally, and shutting herself in as she believes no one understands her, and that she shouldn't exist. Fortunately, Asuka helped her see that is not the case. Yet when we get to Estabal vs. Heart mission, it's perhaps the happiest one, as she tries to get the others to sing with her, even getting them into the act as well despite all the fighting. 
Plus, while her powers do require her to have negativity and harness it, you can occasionally see her smiling afterwards, showing she isn't as hard on herself as she used to be. Sure, she still has some problems, like still shutting herself off from others and just having bad social skills, but it's hard not to get invested in this gloom and doom ninja. Number 8, Yozakura. Despite being one of the youngest girls in the series, Yozakura is surprisingly one of the most mature as well. Part of the reason I rank Yozakura so high on my own list is because of one thing, responsibility. Very few people can actually manage to keep all of their siblings in line, along with managing a team of various people who can go out of control sometimes. A prime example of this is in the beginning of Best of All Verses, where she is given more command of the guessing girls by Yumi. While Yumi is trying to talk to her teammates, they are too busy fooling around with their own activities to listen to her. This prompts Yosakura to yell at everyone else so they could focus on their leader, which they do almost immediately. Much like the other guessing girls though, her backstory wasn't an entirely pleasant one. Her parents died in the line of duty as Shinobi, leaving Yosakura and all of her siblings to be taken by various people, separating them all. Yuzakura had pleaded to take care of them herself, but obviously she was just way too young. Eventually, she was taken in by Kurakage, and trained into using her hands for combat. Her weapons, in this case, come in the form of powerful giant gauntlets, all with a bit of a pile bunker effect, as there is a shaft that keeps adding more pressure to her attacks. It's also symbolic just how much pressure she puts on herself, wanting to have enough power and range to hold everything together. She trains hard to one day reunite with her siblings and be a family again. However, given all the conflicts between schools, it may seem unlikely at this point. Despite that, she isn't completely serious and does show she can relax, which her team is more than happy to let her do. Number 7, Shiki. I'll be honest here, Shiki is one of my least favorite Senran Kagura characters, and admittedly, it all comes down to her Valley Girl attitude. I am really not a fan, and it was the last thing I expected from a character that can control bats and use a double-edged scythe. That being said, her playstyle is extremely fun, along with her double scythe that shreds into her foes. Her bats also help symbolize her attitude of wanting attention, as they not only fight for her, but also help in carrying her after she finishes a fight. And there is no denying her skill either. Around the same age as Yuzakura, she's already bilingual, although there is a bit of confusion with this. According to the Japanese localization of Festival Verses, she knows both Japanese and English. However, the English localization changed this to French. Regardless of what she took on as a second language, learning it so early in her life is rather impressive. And despite her Valley Girl attitude, she has proved to be quite deadly enough to take on her foes. During the events of Shinobi Verses, despite not really putting too much effort into the fights, she nearly defeated Asuka and defeated Yagyu. Shiki might seem like an airhead, but she is one of the last people anyone should underestimate. Number 6, Hibari. I was definitely one of the ones who initially hated Hibari. It was hard not to, given her overall cute and naive attitude, and when compared to so many cool fighting styles in the Hanzo route in Senran Kagura Burst, I was left controlling what I felt was a gag character, the Dan Hibiki of the Senran Kagura series. However, that was what I originally thought before I got to see her grow throughout the series. Her development during Burst was fairly standard, eventually getting away from the coddling Yaku kept doing to her, holding Hibari back from reaching her full potential. However, that did seem to persist in both the Vita and the 3DS storylines, with Haruka pointing out to Yaku that holding Hibari back wasn't doing her any good. In this of all verses, this was brought to its final boiling point. During this point in the story, Haruka was being a bit forceful with Hibari, and Yaku battled her, claiming that Hibari was hers. Seeing the battle being fought over who owned her, Hibari finally had enough and defeated both of them, saying how she doesn't belong to anyone. Additionally, during a conversation when Asuka said if she was ordered to kill Homura, she would, Hibari was not willing to listen to any of the orders of the good shinobi that would force her to kill a friend due to the bonds they shared. In these games, she evolved from a coddled character into someone who wants to stand on her own. And if her friends won't get along, she will make them, one way or another. She may not make my own top 10, but there's no denying Hibari has certainly worked her way into the hearts of many. And if she hasn't, don't forget, she can just become a giant and squash you under her shoe. Though I think I know a few people who would enjoy that. <laughs> Number 5, Mirai. Mirai is one of the most unique characters, in that she doesn't have a large chest like almost every other character, and yet is somehow not the youngest in the series. In fact, she is technically 16 as opposed to Hibari, who is 15. 
Although, you know, given the ball versus and everything, I'm sure they all aged at one point. It's best not to think about it too hard. She can be pretty insecure about her body and gets riled up quite easily when teased by the likes of Haruka. Outside of a desire for a bigger chest, she doesn't like being seen as just some child. This is seen a lot when she interacts with certain fellow shinobi, as some of them constantly tease her or just proceed to make her angry. Such constant treatment like that can definitely create some self-esteem issues. Well, that and a certain urge to commit murder. See, Mirai actually came from a family line of good shinobi. However, after being relentlessly bullied by those in her class, she opted to join Habijo to gain enough power for revenge. She nearly went through with it too, at least until Homura stopped her and taught Mirai how to properly use her powers. Then, and Mirai eventually accepted her allies as her true friends, with them as the only people who ever really accept her. That said, Haruka's teasing combined with Homura's willingness to pull her through training from hell leaves Mirai with plenty of reason to be stressed out, but at the same time, she is still getting the attention she wants, and Homura at least does respect Mirai. One of the most important factors for Mirai, though, is her ability to recognize when she has gone too far, such as with constantly attacking Murasaki. It does help show she doesn't constantly shoot first. Or at least, she learns not to constantly shoot first. And despite being the weakest of the Crimson Squad members, she possesses a very wide moveset thanks to all of her guns. This made her one of the most unique characters to play as, as she specializes in long range, bombarding foes with all sorts of weapons. In Shinobi vs, I remember her heavy attack was able to break the game too, as enemies could get stunlocked by it. Mirai is someone who gives into her emotions a ton. Sometimes that can be good, but other times she could really use a chill pill. Even so, people should be careful who they mess with, lest they want to be blown up by the wide variety of guns she wields. <laughs> Number 4. Murakumo Speaking of stress and confidence issues, here's another character who probably has it even worse. How so? Well, Morikumo can only be confident while she wears that mask of hers. Without it, she is a jittering mess that has trouble showing her face and even completing a sentence. With it, she is no longer some weak girl, but rather a near monster on the battlefield who shows no mercy to any of her foes. Yet it also helps make her sillier when she engages in other activities, such as trying to create her stories. Just watch the beginning of Estival Versions with the Guessing Girls, and you'll know exactly what I mean. It gets even weirder if you do her heart mission, where she does try her best to go outside without her mask, but ends up panicking by the time she goes on stage with Yomi. The rest, well, you should probably see it for yourself. However, there is even more development for her character in Estival Versus, as her best friend, Yomi, takes away Morikumo's mask. This is done because in the game, Morikumo wants to stay on the island to be with her deceased grandfather, and Yomi wants her friend to gain courage on her own to leave the island. Eventually realizing that she does have to leave her grandfather, she finally gains the confidence to defeat Yomi, regain her mask, only to remove it in front of her grandfather to reassure him that she will be fine without the other personalities she formed. In battle, Morikumo uses both a spear and a cleaver. The Hanya mask she wears can also make her seem much more intimidating, but the mask itself is meant to represent the complexity of emotions. So from another angle, this can make it seem more sad than, say, frightening which does keep in line with her emotions of losing Kurakage and requiring the mask just to function normally. Although the rest of her outfit ruins the scariness of it, the armor itself is poorly designed. However, her fierce onslaught is only made deadlier with three wolves she can summon to her side, the third one in particular able to help her mow down foes while she rides it. Those wolves also kind of help symbolize Morikuma's reliance on others in order to fight to her fullest. That said, given her bond with the Guessing Girls and Yomi, there's no real shame in getting help either, just so long as it isn't a crutch for you. Number 3. Yumi In the Senran Kagura community, there is hardly any character more polarizing than Yumi. We'll cover her negatives, but she has plenty of positives too. Losing her folks at a young age, Yumi was adopted by her grandfather, Korakage. He initially trained her to follow his ideology, though had some concerns when Yumi's training was advancing rapidly and his body was failing him. All the time spent with him caused Yumi to take her grandfather's will to heart, to annihilate schools like Abijo that train evil shinobi, as well as Hanzo for associating with those schools. In the Hanzo route of shinobi verses, her dedication is quite fierce, even willing to die for her grandfather's belief just to make him happy. Though regardless of what route you play, she does eventually learn not to just blindly fight for the sake of one person's justice, especially as she realizes her grandfather just wants her to be happy. She did mellow out a bit, but is still serious about her job as a leader of the Guessing Girls. Her story was pretty interesting, with Estabal versus adding more development when she does meet her grandfather again and must resist just staying on the island instead of doing her duty. Not to mention she is fairly fun and interesting to use in combat, 
capable of freezing her foes with long range shots or radial strikes from her fan. However, Estebol Versus did have some problems in pushing Yumi as a main character. Her wins were fairly impressive, but the impact they had and the execution was rather weak. For example, in her fight against Korakage, the background never changes, there is no boss battle at all, and not even the writing can help sell the fight as being an incredibly tense one. Another example was against Jasmine, who was already weakened due to fighting 13 Shinobi before fighting Yumi. That and Jasmine's transformation was actually harming her too, giving Yumi even more of an advantage. Even Yumi's new form is not really showcased, nor is it all that great in-game. I wish the spider from Shinobi vs would return. Then we have the wife angle they tried to do for her Shinobi Heart mission for no real reason aside from just trying to make her into a waifu, which isn't needed for any character when they can be awesome in their own way. Despite my complaints though, and despite her coldness, she is also very cool. Please don't kill me for that pun. Number 2, Hikage. Often known as the Emotionless Ninja, Hikage is a member of Homura's Crimson Squad, and one of the deadliest on the team as well. While the emotionless bit of her might make her seem like a bland character, she is anything but that. Her interactions within the game do help show that it's not a matter of not possessing emotion, it's just a matter of not really, well, knowing how to express yourself. It can help explain a lot given her backstory, and the rather traumatic event she endured before joining Hibijo. She's certainly not heartless by any means, and there are many events to prove this. The Shinobi Heart scenario in Shinobi vs is a good example, as she doesn't really know what to do one day, and just sticks to trying to make her team happy by cooking a good meal. Yomi was in charge of that, but mostly cooked grass due to their budget, so anyone taking over is a good thing. Another good example is in Burst, when she thinks Mirai died and was thrown into a dumpster, similar to how her old friend ended up, and even cried a bit until she found out Mirai was just playing dead. Hikage's greatest strength to me, though, has always been her gameplay, with fast strikes and the ability to mow down foes with her fierce dashes. While we now know her as the Emotionless Ninja, her special attacks do create a callback to her previous appearance in Burst, where she was smiling much more in the Hanzo route, almost psychotically. Hikage represents a character type not seen too often in video games, and perhaps someone you can even relate to. Not fully, mind you, but there are times we all have trouble expressing our own feelings. Or maybe we have a deep darkness inside of us waiting to be expelled as we slice and diced it in no wait no wait, i i think that's just me i need therapy and the number one girl of operation rainfall you know what it's only fitting we let her introduce herself <laughs> It was a tough battle for first place, and I am thankful my personal favorite character made the top of this list as number one. Considering the long ass video I did on her, I have quite a lot to say about this character. No, for the sake of this video, I'll shorten it. Homura was originally a good shinobi, and about to enter her first year of school when a certain event happened that changed her life forever. Because she faced a ton of pressure from her folks, she spent a ton of time with her tutor, grew to like him, and even confessed to him, just to find out he was an assassin sent to kill her family. Whoops. When she started crying about this news, he took pleasure in watching her suffer. At that moment, something inside of her head just snapped, and she damn near destroyed the man, basically having a rage equal to that of Wolverine minus the claws. Despite this impressive feat considering, well, she wasn't exactly a trained shinobi or anything, she broke a number of rules and showed how unstable she was, and could not attend a good shinobi school. This caused her parents to disown her as well, leaving her only a sword she couldn't even draw yet. Fortunately, help arrived in the form of Suzune who took her off the streets and into a bijo, where she could be accepted, even though Homura beat the snot out of one of their members. From then on, she fought her way to the top, becoming the leader of the students and one of the elites to boot. Because of her position and the event that happened, she didn't really see her team as true friends. There were occasions where she might have tried to help them have fun, or even comfort Mirai, but it was more of a job than anything else. This was proven true when Haruka started hanging out with Hibari, and Yomi befriended Ikarika. Due to her own trust issues, and the fact that her team seemed to be getting too friendly with the enemy, even going so far as to accept Hibari onto the team, Homura took action. In order to settle the matter, Dogen and Suzune agreed on a team of Homura, Hikage, and Mirai against Haruka, Yomi, and Hibari. During her fight with Haruka, she pretty much overwhelmed the other shinobi, to the point that Haruka just had to give up. Yet it was through this hard-fought battle that Homura realized she was mostly wrong about everything as well. 
especially given how hard of a fight Haruka put up. And rather than just leaving it to the power of friendship to win the day, as other series do, both Haruka and Homura agreed that power and trust are just as important, convincing Homura to finally care more about her team. She was so dedicated to her friends that when she found out Dogen planned to use them to summon up a monster called Orochi, she cut him in half without a second thought, and she even cut up Orochi from the inside while fighting her friends, whose minds were growing more and more corrupted by the demon. And despite her victory, there was still something wrong. What the hell were they gonna do now? And this is the part of Homura's character I especially found interesting, as she struggles with what to do, knowing she helped ruin any plans her teammates had for the future. In fact, she was willing to keep going on solo so long as they were happy. Though, of course, they don't want to leave, and even their teacher and Hanzo propose something besides fighting other schools, Yoma Slain, basically to prevent things like Orochi from ever popping up. And it's a prospect Homura is all too happy to pick up, satisfying all her needs. Yet it's also interesting, because by doing this in Shinobi Versus, she effectively unites her team with Hanzo, Gessen, and a rebuild Hibijo to dedicate their lives to eradicating the Yoma. Asuka may have helped in creating peace between some of the schools, but it was ultimately up to Homura to help unite them for a common cause. Unfortunately, Homura does suffer some problems in Estival Versus, mainly in that she's barely in the game, loses to Yumi and Renka along with Jasmine, and... not much else. Now, some may say that due to the nature of the game bringing back Fallen Shinobi, she wouldn't have much to do. Except in Shinobi Versus, in order to stop Dogen, who used a technique to survive Homura's blow and burst, there was a Shinobi girl who initially hated Homura, but did die for her sake. The only thing Estival Versus helped gleam about her personality is that she is respectful in the face of defeat, accepting the fact that she failed and has to become stronger. Unless it involves Asuka. And that's only because Homura does like Asuka a lot, the two becoming friends since burst and pushing each other to the absolute limit. She doesn't want that rivalry to end, and to no longer be the strongest friend Asuka knows, it does wound her pride quite a lot. And what I like the most about Homura is how relatable the story was, at least in terms of the basic plotline and not being attacked constantly. Her story is ultimately about finding a purpose after she loses everything in her life, because of a mistake that technically wasn't even really her fault. I kinda had that in my life, being expelled from high school and feeling like the world didn't want me. It was only thanks to a certain school that I could not just gain my life back, but make it even better than before, be filled with a power I only dreamed of getting. And I'm sure we all have some kind of similar moment in our lives as well. Her sheer willpower is stronger than any flame any of the girls can muster up, and that's why I love this character so much. She is the reason I care so much about Senran Kagura. Sure, the character suffered a bit in Estabal Versus, but there's no denying that for both me and Operation Rainfall, Homura is the best character in the Senran Kagura franchise. <laughs> and that's our list. We do hope you enjoyed our thoughts on who are the best girls, but I imagine you may think a bit differently. So who are your favorite characters? Be sure to list them down below and share your love of Senran Kagura as we slowly make our way to the release of Peach Beach Splash, and hopefully the next true Senran Kagura game as well. This is Jonathan Ballou, aka the smartest moron of Operation Rainfall, and thank you for watching.